welcome back to day five of our five ways over five days of coping with COVID-19. Today we're going to talk about coping with distress. So it's perfectly understandable in our daily lives that we all experience a certain amount of stress and stress has function. It actually motivates us to get up in the morning and to go to work and do what we need to do. But during the current situation with COVID-19, a lot of people are experiencing significant distress in their lives. So people's lives have changed very dramatically. So you might be working from home, you may have lost your job, but there are significant changes in your life that have turned perfectly ordinary everyday stress into something far more uh, challenging and far more distressing for most of us. Okay, so the first skill that we're going to talk about is our stop skills. And these are really useful skills when our emotions are starting to overwhelm us. So the S in stop stands for stop, don't react, just freeze. Your emotions are trying to get you to act and I want you to slow down and stay in control. The T stands for take a step back, take a break, take a step back from the situation, take a deep breath and don't act on your impulses. The O stands for observe and it's about noticing what's going on inside and outside of you. What is this situation? What are your thoughts? What are your feelings? And finally, the P is where we proceed mindfully. This is where we act with awareness and we make a wise mind decision as to how we move forward. So sometimes what we actually have to cope with is stuff that is well beyond our control. And at the moment, COVID is bringing many challenges and putting obstacles in our way that we can control. And a really useful skill to practice in those situations is a skill called radical acceptance. So sometimes when we use the word acceptance, people assume that to accept means to like, that it's okay with me, I accept it. What we mean by radical acceptance is, it is what it is, even if I don't like it. So it's a kind of a radical version of acceptance. In this next scene, Alan Frazetti gives us an example of radical acceptance in our daily lives. Okay, so in this example, you can see this fellow is, he's thirsty. He's been working away and has developed some thirst, pretty normal, goes to the machine, puts in some money, pushes the right buttons, but doesn't get a drink. And as the machine does sometimes, he pushes the, the change return button, but it keeps the money. So now he's paid some money, doesn't get the money back, doesn't have the drink. And primary emotion here, pretty common. We'd feel frustrated. We wouldn't like that. And that's, that's really normal and absolutely healthy. The question is, what do we do now? Down the healthy path would be to accept the reality that this machine ate his money, <laughs> and isn't giving him his drink. And as much, and it, the other reality, which is he doesn't like it. Those are all just facts. So acceptance has to do with accepting facts. It doesn't mean that's a permanent state. He doesn't have to accept that he'll stay thirsty for the next 30 years. He has to accept, if he's gonna be effective, that he is still thirsty, and this machine is not the way that he's going to take care of his thirst. Now, the trouble is, if he gets angry enough, if he gets judgmental enough, he does what lots of people do. He starts to shake the machine, or pound on the machine, or kick the machine. And, uh, you know, a little bit of that might actually be effective. It might jar the coin loose and might come back. But more than that, he also could get arrested. That would ruin his day. But even if he doesn't cause more problems in, in, in that sense, in that big sense, Every second that he's pounding on the machine, cursing at the machine, standing there, his thirst is getting bigger and the rest of his life is getting smaller. So the faster he can accept the reality, this isn't the way he's going to get a drink, the quicker he can stand away from the machine, go find a sink and get a glass of water. So lots of people are going through very difficult and very painful situations. And what we know is that when we refuse to accept pain, it turns very ordinary 
and very understandable immediate pain into long-term suffering. So one of the skills that you can practice is to radically accept it is this way for now, but it's not going to be this way forever. And that things will change, it may take time, but things will change, and that we will move on. So we might have to tolerate pain at this moment in time, but we don't have to endure long-term suffering. So we can remember this equation, that pain plus non-acceptance equals suffering, and we don't have to experience suffering if we're willing to accept pain just in the short term for this moment in time. This brings us to the end of our five ways over five days of coping with COVID-19. I hope that you found these skills helpful and useful in managing to cope with your own emotional distress at this point in time. So it's really important that we remember that we understand our emotions, that we understand our states of mind, that we try to be mindful of our emotional state and our thinking at this time, that we're mindful of other people and that we do our best to cope with the distress that COVID-19 brings.